Welcome, this is G. You are watching All Astrology, and we are going to talk about your October Sage. We're going to talk about the eclipse. Yeah, there's an eclipse this month. It's towards the end of the month. Depending upon degrees in your chart, like just where things are located, you may feel the effects of this eclipse sooner than October, right? And I'm going to tell you in what area of your life the eclipse occurs. It's either in love or, or, or work or, you know, we'll just, we'll find out where it's at for you and we'll talk about that. When eclipses come, things happen, changes occur. And so we'll discuss what kind of changes those are and then we'll pull a card for that. Okay, we'll give a card like as a clarifier just to give more details. And then after that, I'm going to try to briefly talk about Mars because Mars for like the next six, seven months is in one sign because it does a retrograde, right? And so this is going to be an area of your life where change is also going to happen. And so first off, we're going to talk about the eclipse and the eclipse is in the sign of Scorpio. Where is Scorpio energy in your chart? Right. So that one's pretty easy, actually, because if, if Sag is on your ascendant, Scorpio is in your 12th house. Now, stick with me here. If you're if you're confused so far by anything I've just said, I'm, I'm going to explain it in a way where you don't have to know anything about astrology. OK, so you just just comment to me whatever your questions or your concerns are, or your birth digits. Now, this is going to be a new moon eclipse. So you'll hear it referred to as a solar eclipse. Right. Because it's going to be the sun right? And because it's an eclipse, it involves the moon in some way. So it's the sun and the moon together. So it's a new moon solar eclipse. All right. And you know that when the sun and the moon are together, it's a grand opportunity for a new beginning. It's the perfect time to start something new. It's a time of wishing. It's a time of prayer. It's a time of intention setting. It's a time of beginning something. You know, it's like the energies around you, the divine frequencies are working in your favor for this new beginning, whatever that's going to be. Okay. Now, obviously your free will is a major player in this. So you choose what it is that you want to begin. However, working with the energies that are working with you, right? It's kind of like if you're in that body of water that's rushing one way, the stream is flowing one way. Are you going to be the salmon trying to swim upstream? Or are you just going to kind of t let it take you and, and not try to fight it, right? I mean, it, it's your choice, right? You could do whatever you want. So the whole point of the astrology is to say, well, this is the way the energy is flowing. This is the energy that we're in, the moment, the the energetic weather. If we got snow, you make sure you want to have your snow boots, right? And a, and a shovel, maybe some salt in the car, right? This eclipse being in Scorpio, and it's a new moon. So the new moon, it's a new beginning, right? But because it's in Scorpio energy, it tells us it's a release of something. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's like Scorpio energy is a release of a shared value, right? So for some folks, because it's Scorpio, this can be deep emotions, right? This is bonded energy. So it can be blood bonds. For many, it's money, monetary bonds, like, you know, you're married and, and you have shared assets. Yeah. But again, it can also be the emotions, right? So many times when there's emotional bonding, especially in the sign of Scorpio, because it's, it, it's a sign who can be combative and who's been through some intense experiences. So maybe these are people who literally fought together, you know, band of brothers type of thing or soldiers. You don't have to even be somebody who used a weapon because that would be Scorpio energy. And so when you have these events, it leaves like an emotional wound right? It, it's traumatic. And so anybody else who's gone through that with you or who, even if they weren't with you, but if they experienced it and they have that understanding, there's like this bond that happens, right? When you guys talk, it's like, oh my God, they get it. They get it. And so when you meet somebody who gets it, there's this thing that occurs, right? It's like, you can't pretend you can't make it happen. There just is an energetic bond that forms right? And it, and it doesn't have to be like that, right? It can, the sign of Scorpio can also be uh, uh, intimate bonds, physically intimate bonds. So sexuality, right? People who are, who are sharing those sort of experiences together, they can also create these emotional bonds, right? These energetic bonds, because Scorpio energy has the ability to penetrate, to penetrate another, another's energy. And when it can penetrate, yeah, penetration, right? Scorpio. <clears throat> um, 
when it can penetrate, it's think about that. Just think about when, you know, like there's a flow of water going down and you take your hand and you, you, you kind of disturb that flow. You put your hand in there. Well, what happens, right? Your hand doesn't become necessarily one with the water, but you absolutely feel the way the water feels, whether it's cold or hot, you can feel the force of it, right? So there's something there where, where the energies, right, kind of merge. And so that's that Scorpio energy. And I keep talking about Scorpio because this is where the eclipse is happening. So it, so it gives us the opportunity for, for um, transforming, for processing and healing, for releasing wounds from the past, okay? 12th house is your subconscious. Yeah, so it's stuff you're not super aware of. It's subconscious. So subconscious, so this can also be like when you're asleep. What happens when you sleep, right? You get you have dreams, right? So dreams. You might get information in your dreams. You might have violent dreams. You might have experiences in your dreams where it's like, whoa, it's intense. Another Scorpio keyword, intense. Powerful and intense, okay? So there might be subconscious emotional wounds. And this would be from the past. Now, this can be, uh, I'll be real with you, because it's the 12th house energy. The ascendant represents the moment of birth. So something in somebody's 12th house can represent a past life, can also represent what occurred when you were in your mother's womb, right? Absolutely. But the point is, there's stuff there that has to be processed, healed, and, and to be released. And that's Scorpio energy, this releasing thing, healing, healing and transformational energy. So. Um, what I'm hearing big time because you you have like you've got history in the house of history, but you have deep emotions in the house of history, right? Of like soul's history. So there's a lot of wisdom, there's a lot of knowledge. It's super intense, it's super powerful. And this is this Phoenix rising energy. It's a time to let go, to release, but first having to process those old wounds and likely meeting individuals who either remind you of what you want or what you don't want because it's shared value energy, right? It's like, okay, I can be powerful and intimate <clears throat> and have an intense, intense experience with this person, but there's just something I know I no longer want in my life. It's no longer a value of mine. I no longer want to have those experiences with, with a person, right? I don't want to have those sort of shared experiences. And so when we have that awareness about something, and I know this seems so vague, right? Because, well, how many different people are there, right? We all have our own free will and our own experiences. The thing is, it's an emotional wound from the past. You're releasing and letting go. And once you do that, it's making room for your new beginning. So I heard to shuffle the cards again, quick little thing, and then to split the deck and give you a card that will hopefully give us a little bit more definition and meaning. So I'm going to, I'm going to just cut the deck in half here. And then I'm being told to take this card that showed up right here. <clears throat> and so that's what we're going to do. Where, yeah. So this card, what I think is fascinating is I'm seeing Saturn show up. We've got Saturn showing up on the card. Okay. And that is time. Saturn rules time. Saturn is the master timekeeper. Now, if we look at the big picture on this card, it looks like a confessional, right? We've got, we've got somebody kneeling over here, right? <clears throat> it looks like they are uh, confessing, right? You see the cross and then you see like a clergy, person of the clergy over here. So this isn't about religion. This is simply about uh, seeing there's some sort of um, asking of forgiveness, okay? There's some sort of uh, penitence going on. I think that's the right word. So now clergy and understanding and forgiveness is over here, Jupiter. And that's your ruler. That is your ruler. Sag, Jupiter rules you. I love this. You see your sign up here, the arrow? Yeah, Sagittarius and Jupiter. So there's wisdom. This is wisdom because it sees the big picture. Okay. And that's what we're talking about for you. It's stuff from the past, stuff that's happened, right? Because when you go and you, you confess your sins, um, it's things you did in the past, right? So it may not necessarily be something that you did that you're processing, but 
It's just things that you were involved in and maybe you had unconscious judgments, okay, over things that happened, experiences that you might have had, you know, shared energy with somebody else. So um, this says an authority figure, though, by the way, because we have Saturn, okay? So that's somebody who was either a parent, father might be present. And I don't mean father as in priest. I mean, father figure because it's Saturn, right? And that's an authority figure or a masculine energy. But then over here, what's really fascinating is we have Jupiter and Jupiter also represents somebody, you know, obviously somebody of the clergy, somebody of the cloth, spiritual, religion, freedom, truths, right? Um, wisdom the wisdom, right? And of course, this is forgiveness and understanding, forgiveness, understanding, and unity. Like, you know what? Everything happens and, and, and we're human, right? And so, you know, you're forgiven, forgive the other person, whatever that wound was, right? Whether it was something you yourself did or something somebody else did to you, um, when we don't forgive and let go, we allow it to do additional damage to ourselves, right? And we end up expending our own energy on something that we just really got to release and let go, you know? So this is a really fascinating card. Um, it's hopeful and beautiful in my mind. They know how to cooperate and how to work together. Now, this is also foreigner energy. So somebody who may look different than you, somebody who, 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 who may not be born you're like in the same place that you are type of thing. So this is really interesting energy. It shows us that there's a really good opportunity to do exactly what we talked about for your eclipse energy, for these energies to work together, to understand the big picture and to work together, to forgive, forget, and to move on. So now we're going to talk about Mars. At the butt end of August, Mars went into the sign of Gemini. And so again, I mentioned this earlier, how it's going to stay there. So it's an area of your life that's going to be active, where you are literally going to be taking actions, really involved. You're not going to like be sitting on the sideline. You're going to be like, you know what? Uh, I'm ready to explore my options. I'm ready to explore my options because it's Mars. Mars, remember, like it, it wants to do things. It wants to be first. It doesn't have a whole lot of patience. You know, Gemini is air. And Mars is like fire energy. So when you have air and fire mixed, you know, they kind of like, right, they grow, right? And, and they take off. It's like that rocket energy. So Mars in Gemini, uh, this happens in your seventh house. And so your seventh house is significant one-on-one -on -one relationships, Sag. Right. So it's partnerships. This can be marriage partnerships. Um, this can be business partnerships. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one relationships, very big deal because you have said because you have Mars here, and this is for the next six to seven months, right? We're talking like April, May of 2023. So it's like you're taking action. You're not sitting on your hands. You know, it's kind of like that that piss or get off the pot type of thing. Like you can't just sit there and and be you know, a lackadaisical or just kind of sing songy or just kind of be like, oh, well, I'm not sure. No, Mars is saying, you know what? Um, I either want to do this or I don't want to do this. And it's saying, I'm going to try this because remember, it's, it's in Gemini. So it's in your seventh house. So it's conversations with people who are important to you, right? Communications with people that are important to you. Uh, it's digital energy. So it can be like this online dating stuff, right? Yeah, because it's Gemini energy. And that is online communications, big time, texting, email, but it might even be like uh, dating websites and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is really interesting. There might be something here where you are like saying, uh, because Gemini likes um, to mix things up. It likes variety right? It, it likes variety. It's not about I'm um, looking for long term. It's not. Gemini is more like, um, you know, it's like that jack of all trades energy. It's all into talking and communication, but it wants flexibility. It doesn't want to be tied down. It does not. So, you know, it's really fascinating because we all have like Uranus and Taurus. And so that's been, that's been really shaping and molding our values. Like, who we value and what we value, right? 
like what we once valued, we may no longer value anymore, right? Or um, yeah, just we're we're really we're really we're really like with a laser almost. We are really pinpointing and redefining that which we value, and it's going to be something different and new. We are considering new and different because, well, that's Uranus energy. It's saying, you know what? Those are your old values. It's time for something fresh and different and exciting is the word for the next, you know, five years. Right. Yeah. Different, exciting. So, so let's pull a card and let's get some more uh, clarity for you. Right, Sag? Let me mix, mix this one more time. And, uh, yep, they're telling me whatever that card is on the top to show it to you. And that's what we're going to do. Card from the top. Ready? Uh, who was the, is the patron saint of animals? We've got birds. Yep, winged beings, a little lamb in his hands. I think that's a lamb. Um, we've got like the ram over here, right? There's a herd, sheep. Yeah, birds are present. Uh, we have Venus energy, Venus and Taurus. Ooh, Sag, love, relationships. This is also money though, okay? It's values, values. And it's earth energy in general, which is why I think they give uh, St. Francis this, this symbol because it's all about, it's not just about the animals. It understands that animals are dependent on the land, on the earth, right? And so what I love is Saturn is here for you. You see that? Saturn, Saturn and Capricorn, this is wonderful energy. They get along really well. These trying each other, right? Yep, they trying each other. So this is this is money and values. It can be love and relationships. This is work. This is a job. Interesting, right? Work, a job, but it's also my long-term material security, my finances. Absolutely. So what the heck does that have to do with your Mars energy? Well, because it's in your seventh house, it's really interesting. Are you going to be considering somebody who's older and more mature, who is more financially uh, settled, who is more financially secure? Yep. This is masculine energy. This is feminine energy. Right. Masculine and feminine. Looking for your material and financial securities. But peace is also important. Okay. Peace is also important. Um, Taurus is all about peace and stability. Right. Values, money, food. Right. The five senses. That's Taurus. Smells, taste, touch, beauty. Big time beauty. This is more somebody who is serious. So it's super fascinating to me because... um. The Mars being in Gemini is like, I want flexibility. I don't want to settle down. So that tells me you're experimenting. You're going to be experimenting with people who are a little bit more mature, but you know in your mind for like the next six, seven months, it's not about, okay, the next one, I'm just going to stick with them no matter what. No, you're, you're treating this like, like a real experiment. You understand that, yeah, it's just a process. And even if you find someone who feels like the keeper, it's more like you real, well, this card is showing us time reveals all. Time, no rushes, no hurries. Uh, and remember, this is sensual, so this can also be sexual, right? No rushes, no hurries. Uh, get, a, get a stronger grip on people maybe before you go to that next route of intimacy um, or, or to the next level of intimacy, whether it's physical or emotional. But yeah, keep it grounded. Keep it simple. Think beauty, think long term. Is this somebody I can make it for the long term? So even though you're having fun right now, at the end of the day, you are looking for someone who, who can make it long term. But you got to have your peace in that process, right? Absolutely. You got to have your peace in that process. So below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.